Hi, I'm Christy Wilbur, Director of Pupil Personnel Services, otherwise known as PPS. The information I will be sharing addresses the documentation needed when making a referral to PPS for a DAP or JJAEP placement. Our Board of Trustees and our Superintendent expect all administrators to properly investigate each student referral or behavior appropriately before making a final decision regarding a consequence for being in violation of the District Student Code of Conduct. In addition, all students should be treated fairly and consistently. Consequences should be reasonable and appropriate based on the infraction. Every school administrator is challenged to use various options at the campus level to address inappropriate behaviors prior to recommending a student be suspended off campus or referred for placement in a DAP. As an administrator, when an incident or behavior is observed or brought to your attention, you are obligated to conduct an investigation. It is important that you be objective, open-minded, and avoid coercion. Don't make a decision based on appearance, bias, or past behaviors of the student. Be calm. Force yourself to slow down. Don't rush an investigation. That is when you make mistakes or miss key information. Don't promise confidentiality. Do try. An administrator can tell the student that information will be shared on a need-to-know basis and may type the student's statement, but confidentiality is not a guarantee. Gather information to determine whether the allegation of misconduct occurred and separate fact from fiction. In other words, avoid hearsay, and most importantly, listen. This one simple action is the key to all investigations because more times than none, information is provided to an administrator through verbal discussion. So listen carefully to what the student has to say. As you deal with each discipline issue, check the mainframe data to see if a student is a general ed student or a student who receives services such as 504 or special ed. Should you have a student who receives special services and is becoming a frequent flyer, there is a process that must be followed prior to contacting PPS for a DAP referral. Located on each campus in the Special Education Office, there is an ARD checklist for persistent misbehavior or PMB referrals form. A copy of the form may also be found in the PPS manual. This completed form would be provided to the hearing officer if a referral was being made to show that the campus has held two ARDs regarding the student's behavioral concerns and what they worked on to try to rectify the misbehavior. For PMBs, school administrators should have exhausted all means of support and consequences at the campus level prior to calling PPS with a recommendation for a DAP placement. Ideas for consequences may be found in the Student Code of Conduct section of the Student Parent Handbook. While not all consequences listed in the handbook must occur, it is advised that the campus attempts all that they can prior to making a referral. Please document that parents have been involved in each behavioral concern there should be no surprises. Once the campus assistant principal has investigated and found that the preponderance of evidence shows that the student is in violation of the student code of conduct and the behavior meets the standard for a DAP placement, he or she should inform the principal who must concur with the outcome and the referral for a placement at a DAP. Contact should be made with your designated hearing officer to provide the hearing officer with all of the information gathered before making a call to the parent. It is always a good idea to contact your hearing officer to discuss what you are working on so that your hearing officer can be of any assistance and be prepared for your final call to establish an office referral and set an appointment for an evidentiary discipline conference at PPS. When referring a student to PPS, there are documents the campus must provide to the hearing officer to support a preponderance of evidence 
that the student engaged in the violation of the Student Code of Conduct, as well as documents required by TEA when a school district places a student at a DAP for state auditing purposes. Administrators can locate the documents needed for a referral to DAEP or JJAEP in the PPS manual. The hearing officer will need all required documents listed in the PPS manual no later than the day prior to the evidentiary conference. However, to better prepare for the conference and ensure the investigation is complete, the following documents are required within 24 hours after the conference has been scheduled with the hearing officer. The must-have documents are the narrative. A sample administrative narrative is located in the PPS manual. We refer to it as the Charlie Brown narrative, and it is in the format PPS would like all administrators to follow. Should you need extra assistance with this, please contact your designated hearing officer. We strongly encourage all assistant principals to email a draft narrative to the appropriate hearing officer to preview prior to giving it to the principal to sign off on. All of our hearing officers are more than happy to review your narrative and give helpful suggestions so that you have a complete document that gives all the supporting information necessary, is error free, and does not include opinions, etc. This allows the hearing officer to review the narrative to ensure all pertinent information has been included. Please remember to use the Charlie Brown narrative format when writing the narrative. Another must-have document are all student and witness statements. The hearing officer reviews all statements prior to an evidentiary conference or expulsion hearing to ensure all information has been investigated and all students mentioned within the statements have been interviewed. Finally, pictures and or nurse report if appropriate. Anytime the behavior involves drugs, alcohol, or injury, this information helps give the hearing officer a better understanding of the incident. The other documents required for a referral to PPS, which may be provided to the hearing officer no later than the day prior to the evidentiary discipline conference are the signed narrative. This is the official clean version with a principal signature at the bottom. This is considered an official TEA state auditable document. The signed suspension mainframe letter. This is a document that must have the recommendation of placement, administrator signature, and the parent or guardian signature, or if unable to obtain the parent or guardian signature, some form of written statement by the administrator that the parent or guardian was notified of the incident and provided the time, date, and place of the evidentiary conference at PPS. This document is also considered a TEA state auditable document. If your hearing officer knows in advance that you are having difficulty obtaining the parent or guardian signature, your hearing officer will try to get a signature at the PPS conference and fax you a copy. Many times, your principal can help you by getting the signatures when they have their conference. The teacher-student status reports. Please remind your staff that this information is provided to the parents or guardians and should not include the teacher's opinion or other students' names. Take time to read these prior to sending them to the hearing officer. The counselor report. This report should include information about how long the student has been enrolled at your campus, how the student has performed on state mandated tests, how the student is currently doing academically, if the student has been seen in the counseling office for any behavioral problems, etc. Finally, SPED, MDR, 504 MDR. If the student is special education or 504, and you need guidance in this area, be sure to talk with your campus coordinator and or the district SPED or 504 coordinator. Once the MDR has been completed, the parent guardian signed prior written notice 
PWN for placement will need to be faxed or scanned and emailed to the hearing officer. After the hearing officer has conducted the evidentiary conference and the student is placed at the DAP as a result of the conference, the hearing officer will email the home campus and DAP administrator, data processor, and stand counselor, if in high school, a notification informing them of a student's placement. The hearing officer will also fax the home campus and the DAP administrator a copy of the parent letter of placement. A copy of both of these documents should be placed in the student's discipline file for state auditing purposes. During the past state validation audits, PPS has found that the campuses with 100% documentation bind the following documents and place them in the student's discipline folder when referred to PPS for a DAP placement. The hearing officer's parent letter of placement, the parent guardian signed suspension mainframe letter, the principal signed narrative, the student witness statements, and other supporting documents, pictures video, nurse report, MDR, 504 MDR, grade speed grades, teacher status reports, counselor report. If a student violates the student code of conduct and is being referred to PPS for an expulsion and placement to the JJAEP, the administrator should follow the expulsion process listed in the PPS manual. Should the administrator need extra assistance, contact the campus's designated hearing officer for guidance. No expulsion information should be given to the parent without talking to your hearing officer. In an expulsion hearing, it is necessary that the administrator send all of the documents listed above, plus the parent or guardian signed web-based expulsion letter to PPS within 36 hours preceding the expulsion hearing so that the hearing officer has ample time to review, redact, and prepare all documents for the hearing. The web-based expulsion letter must be generated through the employee portal information regarding how to generate this letter may be found in the PPS manual under the title of Expulsions. The web-based expulsion letter is considered a state auditable document and an expulsion hearing may not occur without a parent or guardian signature or documentation supporting the parent or guardian was informed of their rights listed within the letter. Referrals for a DAP or JJAEP placement require a lot of work for both the campus and hearing officer. Should you have any questions or need any assistance, please contact the campus's designated hearing officer. If you are not sure if an incident requires a referral to PPS, discuss with your fellow administrators, principal, and hearing officer. I hope this information has helped and you have a wonderful school year. Please be advised that you should always call PPS and speak with a hearing officer if you have any student whose behavior hurts another child, involves a weapon of any sort, involves drugs or alcohol, or is sexual in nature for advice. Remember, our department is always available to assist you. Thank you.